Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is Tuesday, the 22nd of November. Let's pray as we begin this new day with God in our hearts, with God on our lips, seeking his grace, his all-sufficient grace to sustain us through this day. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, May the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day, <clears throat> and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The heavens bear witness to your wonders. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaims your truth. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. <clears throat> and this psalm this morning is uh, Psalm 97, Psalm 97. <clears throat> Psalm 97. You, Lord, are most high over all the earth. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings lit up the world. The earth saw it and trembled. The mountains melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. 
The heavens declared his righteousness and all the peoples have seen his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in mere idols. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his faithful and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joy for the true of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. You, Lord, are most high over all the earth. And our prayer. Most high and holy God, enthroned in fire and light burn away the dross of our lives and kindle in us the fire of your love that our lives may reveal the, the light and life we find in your son our savior jesus christ amen <clears throat> and the collect for this week two collects for christ the king sunday Eternal Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, our... Our Old Testament reading this morning is Isaiah chapter 40. <coughs> Isaiah 40, from verse Verse twelve to twenty six. <clears throat> Can anyone measure the ocean by handfuls or measure the sky with his hands? Can anyone hold the soil of the earth in a cup or weigh the mountains and hills on scales? Can anyone tell the Lord what to do? Who can, compare, who can teach him or give him advice? With whom does God consult in order to know and understand and to learn how things should be done? To the Lord, the nations are nothing, no more than a cup of water. The distant islands are as light as dust. All the animals in the forests of Lebanon are not enough for a sacrifice to our God, and its trees are too few to kindle the fire. The nations are nothing at all to him. To whom can God be compared? How can you describe what he is like? He's not like an idol that workmen make, that metal workers cover with gold and set in a base of silver. The man who cannot afford silver or gold chooses wood that will not rot. He finds a skillful craftsman to make an image that won't fall down. Do you not know? Were you not told long ago? Have you not heard how the world began? 
It was made by the one who sits on his throne above the earth and beyond the sky. The people look, the people below look as tiny as ants. He stretched out the sky like a curtain, like a tent in which to live. He brings down powerful rulers and reduces them to nothing. They are like young plants, just set out and barely rooted. When the Lord sends a wind, they dry up and blow away like straw. <clears throat> to whom can the holy God be compared? Is there anyone like else like him? Look up at the sky. Who created the stars, you see? The one who leads them out like an army. He knows how many there are and calls each one by name. His power is so great, not one of them is ever missing. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a great, I mean, it's, it's just powerful words, isn't it? The incomparable God. He cannot be compared to anything else. There is nothing upon earth. There is nothing in the created world that we can use to compare God. This awesome God that we serve, sisters and brothers. Um, yes, let's, I mean, that is the, the it's, a, it's a series of questions, isn't it? A series of questions. Can anyone tell the Lord what to do? Do you not know? Have you not heard long ago? Um, to whom can the Holy God be compared? Is there anyone else like him? These are all rhetorical questions because the answers, of course, nothing, no one, nothing at all. Amen. That is our God, God, sisters and brothers, and he is the one we worship. All right, let's move. Let's move to our New Testament reading, which is the book of Revelation, which is where we are um, looking at the very end of the, 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 the Bible. And of course, the very end of humanity, the very end of the universe. The, as the, the, the visions unfold in the book of Revelation, John, John is uh, receiving these visions, the unfolding of God's purposes throughout history. We get nearer and nearer to the end um, over and over again. We, we are given um, a, a vision of what the end will look like. And uh, we're going to see a, another vision of that now. Verse chapter 14 of Revelation. We're going to read from verse 14 and to the end of chapter 15. So Revelation chapter 14 from verse 14 to the end of chapter 15. <clears throat> So we've come to the harvest of the earth, which is a symbol of the end, sisters and brothers, the final judgment. Then I looked, and there was a white cloud, and sitting on the cloud was what looked like a human being, with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out from the temple and cried out in a loud voice, to the one who was sitting on the cloud. Use your sickle and reap the harvest, because the time has come, the earth is ripe for the harvest. Then the one who sat on the cloud swung his sickle on the earth, and the earth's harvest was reaped. Then I saw another angel come out of the, the temple in heaven, and he also had a sharp sickle. Then another angel, who is in charge of the fire, came from the altar. He shouted in a loud voice to the angel who had the sharp sickle, Use your sickle and cut the grapes from the vineyard of the earth, because the grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle on the earth, cut the grapes from the vine, and threw them into the winepress of God's furious anger. The grapes were squeezed out in the winepress outside the city, and blood came out of the winepress in a flood 
300 kilometers long and nearly two meters deep. Okay, let's just stop there for a second and re reflect on that. Um, we're going to read chapter 15, but just reflect, sisters and brothers, on what's going on. There are two harvests, as you notice. Um, the, the harvest of the earth is the very end. Um, Jesus in the gospel speaks of the end times, the very last judgment upon the earth as a harvest. God will gather the wheat into his barn and they will burn the chaff with fire. That sort of imagery, if you remember. Now here we have another harvest imagery. First, the one who sits on the cloud that looks like the human being is, of course, our Lord Jesus Christ himself gloriously um, in his glory. And he has a sickle. <clears throat> and he, he uses the sickle to harvest the, 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 the earth. The, the, the one who sat on the cloud swung his sickle on the earth and the earth's harvest was reaped. And now that harvest is a harvest of the righteous. There are two harvests. The, the Lord, the one who sits on the cloud, brings in his, the harvest of his people. But then there's another angel and he has another sickle. And, another, and an angel came and said, use your sickle and harvest. And so that angel goes out and harvests the grapes and and, tr and the grapes were trampled down on the, and, and, and instead of juice, blood flowed. Um, and, and this, we are told, the angel, verse 19, the angel swung his sickle on the earth, cut the grapes from the vine, and threw them into the winepress of God's furious anger. So this, this second harvest is the harvest of the wicked, the harvest of judgment. So the first harvest is the harvest of the righteous, done by our Lord himself. The second harvest done by the angels is a harvest of the wicked who are then judged by God's, by God's judgment, God's anger. So that's, that's the harvest. Let's go to chapter 15. because I, I, I think I needed to stop there because this, uh, chapter 15 is going to talk a little bit more about the end. Then I saw in the, in the, in the sky another mysterious sight great and amazing. There were seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last ones, because they are the final expression of God's anger. And I, I, I want you to hold on to that expression, because that is the key to understanding chapter 15. They are the final expression of God's anger. Then I saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire. I also saw those who had, who had won the victory over the beast and its image and over the one whose name is represented by a number. They were standing by the sea of glass, holding harps that God had given them and singing the song of Moses, the song of God and the song of the Lamb. Lord God Almighty, how great and wonderful are your deeds. King of the nations, how right and rule, how right and true are your ways. Who will not stand in awe of you, Lord? Who will refuse to declare your greatness? You alone are holy. All the nations will come and worship you because your just actions are seen by all. After this, I saw the temple in heaven open with a sacred tent in it. The seven angels who had the seven plagues came out of the temple dressed in clean shining linen and with gold belts tied around their chests. Then one of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven gold um, bowls full of the anger of God who lives forever and ever. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory and power of God. And no one could go into the temple until the seven plagues brought by the seven angels had come to an end. Amen. So that is, so that's a seven, the seven last plagues. Now this is again, remember, it, you know, it's not, it's not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's not the point. The point is that the, the very last judgments that God will bring upon the earth are symbolic of seven plagues, like the plagues 
that were brought on the Egyptians. When God delivered his people from that, from, from, from that oppression, uh, the, the seven last plagues are God's final judgment upon the, the human race, um, upon, upon, upon the earth. And, and that is going to be the, the very end. That's why I said in verse 1, there were seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last ones, because they are the final expression of God's anger. But in the midst of that, or be, <clears throat> as that is about to be unfolded, you have those, in, in, the saints in heaven. Don't forget, sisters and brothers, always, always, there are the saints who are worshiping God. And so we are told that, 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 that in, verse, in verse 2, that, that I saw looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire. Those who had won the victory over the beast in his image, they were, whole, they were standing by the sea of glass. The sea of glass, of course, represents the purity of God, the, the, the beauty and, 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 and shining beauty of God's holiness. And they're standing there and they are singing the song of Moses, the song of the Lamb, the song of God. And, and what is that song? You are almighty God. You're wonderful. You're the king of the nations. You alone are holy. All the nations will come and bow before you. And this, 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 the saints in heaven are singing, sisters and brothers. This is a, so every time, every time we meet the believers in heaven, the saints in, in heaven, they are worshiping. Heaven is one continuous worship of God. You know, that's why, that's why we cannot get enough of that worship here. Because heaven is worship. Heaven is the, the, the focus of heaven. Is on the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. He alone is to be worshipped. And so even in the midst of the final judgment, God's people are worshiping God for his greatness. How wonderful are your deeds and so on. Who will not stand in awe of you, Lord? Who will refuse to declare your greatness? You alone are God. That, sisters and brothers, is our song, the song of redemption, the song of God, the song of Moses, the song of the Lamb, that we, we will sing and we do sing, and the saints are singing, but this vision, of course, is a vision of the very final judgment when the very last plagues will be poured out on the dwellers upon earth. Not God's people. God's people are singing hymns to God who are worshiping God. But those on the earth, those who have rejected God, will experience the plagues of God's anger and God's wrath. Um. That's it. I'll leave it there because next we go and look at the, the bowls. But let's move on. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, thank you for giving us this new day. Thank you for bringing us to the beginning of another day to seek your mercy and grace in the life that you have given us to live. Lord, this is, each day is a gift. And we are grateful for this gift. So help us, O oh God, we pray. That as we start this new day. As we embark on this new day. Give us your grace, Lord, we pray. In ourselves we are weak. We can do nothing. So strengthen us, O oh God, for the journey ahead. Protect us in our travels, in our journeys. <clears throat> Think of those who are traveling this week. Um, Sister Pine Bailey traveling, I think today or tomorrow. Or Sister Anne Gordon traveling this week as well. Distant traveling, overseas traveling. We pray for them. And so, Lord, be with them and all of us, whatever we are doing this week, that we will be protected, that we will be sustained, that we will be blessed by you in all that we do. <clears throat> I pray especially for our sister Anne and 
as she goes off this week, she flies out. Lord, we pray that you'll give her rest, give her peace in her own soul. Take away any anxiety or any, any, any fear and just give her your peace, Lord. And we pray that you'll give her strength and protect her, protect her and bring her back safely here, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those who are on our hearts, on our prayer list. We pray for, we thank God for Hugh, Maxine's dad, who passed away on Sunday. We pray for his soul. We pray that his soul will rest in peace, in the mercy of God, and that he will rise one day in glory for that reunion with his family. Pray for uh, the, the family. We pray that you, will, Lord, that you will bless them and strengthen them during this their time of grief, the time of weakness, the time of loss. Pray for our sister Ni and family as they mourn the passing of their loved one. We pray, Lord, that she, Ni's mom, will find rest in your presence and one day rise in glory. And we pray for your strength upon Ni and the family. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those on our hearts. Pray for Surya in the hospital, and Johnson, the family. Oh God, we pray that you'll bring healing to our sister Surya. That you will strengthen her body. And God, we pray that you will help the doctors, nurses, and all those who are caring for her. That they will help her to to regain back her health and strength, return to her family, we pray. We pray for our sister Daphne as well, as she gets stronger. We pray, Lord, for her appetite to return. We pray that you will help her to be able to eat again so that she will be able to get strong again. We pray for her. We pray for Pauline and the family as they and, the, and those in the home as they care for her. That you will help them. Give them the wisdom, the, the, help, the help that they need to care for her so that she will get stronger and stronger. We pray for our sister Maxine as she recovers from the surgery. Lord, again, strengthen her limbs. Bring healing to her body so that again she will be able to walk. And will be strong again. We pray for Sue, still in the hospital. We ask for Lord, oh God, for your intervention in her life, and that you'll bring her strength. We pray for Sister Hannah as well, and Jean Murphy, and the pain that she's going through. We pray for our Sister Johanna, a 96, still strong, but yet weak in her body, strong in faith. Weak in body. We pray for our sisters, especially our elderly members. As their body gets weaker, we pray, Lord, that you strengthen their resolve even more. Strengthen their faith, their, 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 their spirit. Lord, we pray. Lord, we pray for Muriel and, and, and David as well. <clears throat> Remember Veronica and Chester. Jean and Walter and Monica and Auntie Janie. Pray for them. We pray also for Dolly and Desmond. Lord, that you'll keep them, strengthen them as well in their weakness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> I want to also remember our sister Tosin as she, um, as she gives birth this week. We pray that the Lord will grant her a safe delivery of her child and strengthen her and give her healthy baby and keep her healthy as well during this time of deliverance. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, 
Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me. Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you <clears throat> and give you his all-sufficient grace today, sisters and brothers, to sustain you, whatever you're doing, wherever you're going. May the Lord bless you and keep you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.